Hey guys, how's it going? I had a friend of mine's shop. I went over and we're BSing for a little while and he says, hey, I got some small engines up in the attic you may be interested in. So we're gonna go Check up there and go see what he's got. All kinds of good stuff. Oh yeah. Some would argue differently that it's not that good. <laughs> like a place for me. So what are they? Yeah, so they her they belong to my godfather. He passed away probably fifteen years ago. Um, he always called them one lungers. Hmm. This one says Elgin on it. And I don't know what brand that is. Yeah, and I don't either. Too neat to let them go to the scrap when we clean their house up. Yeah, you have no idea when the last time they ran or... No, no. Good. When I was little, maybe in not even my teens, I think we had one running on his bench in his basement. Pro I was probably not even 10 years old, I think, and I don't remember which one it was. So, like it's at been, least 45 yeah, years or 40 so years for least. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> the other one, who knows? Yeah. But they still turn. They've been kept warm and dry. You know, they got good compression. Nice. Yeah, I think those would make for a good project. What is what this, you think Elgin? Guys? Elgin cycle motor, so maybe it was for a, a huh. bicycle. I don't know. Because it, it, it can't have much displacement to that thing. That the piston on that thing must be about the size of a, if a half dollar. Uh, Elgin make b mo bicycles? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they made a, a bicycle motor. Uh, a lot of it I know is uh, boat motors, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's a boat motor. A weird setup. All right, so we're gonna go make it make noise. Try to. If not, we'll figure out why they don't. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, so we have a choice. Do we play with that one? Or that one? Let's go take a quick look at each one of them and we'll make a decision. I gotta set up this little roundy round thing. We can get a better look at it. I think somebody patched the gas tank there. I'm guessing is a muffler. Two stroke, tilting carb. Don't know what that is in there. Maybe a governor? Yeah, it looks like it might be it might have went to that. Everything's frozen. The tank just sitting on it. I don't want to screw holding it. I don't know, we think 40s? Be my guess. Turns. Let's go. Pressure feels pretty good. It's got a name on it. I see something written inside. Wilco. Wilco? W I C O? Yeah. W I C O Electric Company. Wicco. Wacko. <laughs> Alright, let's go check out the other one. Yeah, that looks like it's lived a little more of a challenged life. Some wires off of it. I don't know if it was externally. Might be a kill switch. So that's the output. Just looks like plumbing would hook up to it. A little hand throttle on it. Elgin cycle motor. My my guess, it's got a weird pulley system on it, huh? Maybe bicycle? I don't know what genre it's from, but give her a turn. It's very sluggish on this one. And yeah, we got to throw some oil down the piston on that one to get her to move. I don't know, I'm thinking this one, huh? I think it's a little bit more interesting. Probably a little bit more of a challenge, too. And if we fall flat maybe we'll switch over to uh, the other one tiny piston you see the space between there two fingers and then you know <laughs> after the cast is away what, what do you got like I don't know it's uh, probably the size of a quarter we're thinking all right let's go get the plug out of this let's go look in the tank uh, yeah it's not happening Nope. What year are you thinking? 
gonna say, probably like pre-war. That's funky. I bet you that's for, no, it's got a hole in it. I was about to say, maybe that's for putting oil. You fill up the tank and fill out the oil and... Doesn't look too bad. It's not all corroded up, so at least the tank was emptied out. I don't know how well it's going to be if we try to bend that back. Aluminum does not like to uh, play well with bending it too many times. It's got some kind of weird thing down in there too. What's that say? Alright, let's get the plug out of her. Dump a little bit of oil in it and spin it over, see if we can get it to kind of free up a little bit. Yeah, I think our biggest issue is going to be if it doesn't have spark. And if any of the pieces are burned out, you know. So one big ass plug for such a small motor. <laughs> it's pretty good. Let's somebody close the gap up real, real tight on it. Let's give her a couple of that. Is this thing lean? There we go. See so if we can get her kind of to go more even so the oil goes all the way around the rings. And let's see if we can kind of I think it's been 45 or 50 years since it's turned, right? It's got a lot of drag. It could be even maybe rust on the magneto. See if I get one rotation around. I think it should spin like butter right now. Yeah. Come on, free up for us. I don't even think this has a cylinder head that comes off. Not sure. We, got, we could probably take the exhaust off too and take a look in there. A lot of times on the exhaust port, you can see the side of the rings. Yeah, it's real gooey. I'm going to shine the light down inside. Let's see if you can see anything. I see oil <laughs> at the top of a piston. Yeah, it's got a lot of drag. Okay, could be on the bottom end too. Let's go get those two studs out and see if we can take a peek inside. You know it's got some age to it when the bolts are square. <laughs> yeah, not really tight. I'll take one. Because people back, even then, were sick of pedaling bicycles. That's still just a guess on my part. Kind of looks like it though. I don't know what the drive system would be. And the reason why maybe it doesn't have a, a good area for a pull start, maybe you were, you kind of pedaled along and bumped, you know, like let it down on a tire or something. And that would spin the engine to get it started. That's how a lot of those, I think even the modern ones are too. The, you know, the little China doll, I think they call them, motors. They put on bicycles, you don't have a pull start or nothing. You just get pedaling, you either pull a clutch or pop it in gear. A couple of cobwebs. Let's go look in the port. Can we sit? Can we turn that? Probably wouldn't hurt just to splash, splash some oil. Let me get you set up. Yeah, that's more like it. Spin that around. Piston doesn't look too bad. And it's just like, I have a feeling maybe it's even the, on the bottom end. Let's go. Splash some oil. In there. It's, it's like gummy feeling, you know? As it could be just like old oily. It's a two stroke, so it would have run on oil, so it would have gotten a little varnishy. Let's go see if that coat just all of a sudden it just kind of freed for a second. Yeah. 
Probably wouldn't hurt to do it on the intake side too, right? I'm gonna work that a little bit and see if we can get it to free up. Yeah, I wouldn't think you would have, it might, I don't think you would have roller bearings in this something. Plus, I don't think this was, this was a very expensive engine. You know, how much would you expend back and then to put a motor? Yeah, it's tight. So tight that it's never gonna start. You need to be able to pull start it. All right. It gets its moments of freeness though. <laughs> Can we get something into the bottom end? Uh, where's the intake of the car, right there? Let's go pop that off. Maybe we shoot oil right through the intake and that'll kind of start lubing some stuff up. Maybe we can put like a spray in there. What do you think? There was no air cleaner at all, huh? Yeah, let's get that a puff of air and blow some of that crap out first, and then we shoot some oil down it. How about we go for some some PB? Yeah, it's got a throttle on. This is the choke. We want that throttle open so we can get past it. Be this, right? One way it's going to be. So, full throttle is towards us. <laughs> Back his orders. So it helps things out. There it goes. There she goes. It's all needed. Yeah, I wonder if it's on the bottom side or we just got the side of that cylinder wet. Let's give it a little more. Get out of there. Just for good, just for good measure. All right. Let's get off this rolly thing. It's kind of flipping back and forth more than I care to. We'll put the plug on top. We'll give her a spin see if we get any spark. What's the over under? I'm going to give it. 20% chance it has spark. Yeah, the top of the plug is broke off. Shoot, Bill. You stick the wire on it, though. Oh, is that stiff? Come on, get over there. I want the other machine's got the same plug. Let's see if we get anything. <laughs> you hold it. <laughs> See anything. So, I would guess it has points, and I would think this is a kill wire. Nothing left on the end of it, but all right, we gotta go figure out why we don't have spark. So we're gonna have to go dig into the end of the pulley. Plus, we should probably set something up that we can spin it with maybe a drill. I don't know what we got. What's uh? We take these three out, see what comes off of here. I don't know if this is even a, like what's this weird drive system here? Is this like a clutch, like a, uh, like, uh, or a CVT or something along that? Like does, does this slide back and forth on this gap? I don't know. Little set screws, what are they? Know, it's got some kind of, I wonder if it's a, it's a clutch. Like a, like a centrifugal clutch or something. And yeah, the hardware is going to be into there. Anything else? Follow where those wires go, right? Make sure we can, yeah, it just goes right behind there and hides. We're gonna have to, I see a screw missing too. Right there. Somebody's been here before us. Hmm. All right, get those three screws out. See what happens when we start digging. Uh 
at least he loosened up. Should be a tell, right? Not much of anything. <laughs> I suspected to see more than that. It does have a nut in the center of it. This stuff will just pull right off. Yeah. Nice. It's a weird pulley, though, huh? I don't get what. Does that slip? Is that the clutch right there? Looks like it's been spinning. On something for a while. Oh, I wonder if it's missing something. Cause, like, what was that rubbing against? You know, just looks kind of weird. Like, why would it have a key? Maybe something somebody added something. Cause why would it have a key on that? If there's nothing that it goes to. We got a model number. Yeah. Elgin man? Yeah, is that an S? <laughs> He's a man. Model 714, number 660. All right, let's go get that off. Is that? got a castle nut on it which would be for you would put a cotter pin in it and I don't see one could be somebody's been through this you know who knows well, like what's this big looking cut thing in it right, let's get that out pop right out of there Put a little under pressure on it, give her a whack with a hammer. Yeah, it's been, been hammered before. Top of it's all. I like to put that on upside down. Yeah, somebody's already punched it with a hammer before. Let me go past that. I don't see an area you can get a screwdriver underneath it. Let's even get a puller on it. It's like the safe way out. I don't know how tight it is. Yeah, not too bad. Why is it getting tight again though? <laughs> Bound up on us. Uh, let's go back off. Maybe the gas tank, just the pressure of the gas tank element. Get rid of this. Yep, gas tank's fighting us. Get that out of our way. Looks like we got two bolts and a gasoline. No metric hardware on this one. It's got some weight to it too, you would think. Well, a bicycle might be fairly heavy, but who knows. Back then. <laughs> your, you know, even like your 50 Schwinn bike was like 40 pounds, right? So.
more. Yeah. Two more on that side. Closer. Let's go see if that'll come off now. <laughs> yeah, that's what was holding it. Well, we got stuff in there. That's good. That yeah, looks pretty decent. I don't see any magnets falling off or anything. Let's get sit up, get a little closer look at that. You wouldn't think that would need a battery to run it, would you? I would think it would just be like a magneto, not a... Uh, you know, we're not going to be able to tell, though, because the... The flywheel is the cam. That's the cam for opening and closing in the points. So you gotta look through the window there. And yeah, I wonder what happened there. Somebody got frustrated <laughs> trying to get access. Yeah, I don't wanna break any wires. I'll have the condenser feels like it's ready to let go. Yeah, I don't I would think this would, again would still be a kill switch. If it went on a bike, you would run a button up to the handlebars, you'd be able to kill it, you know? Who knows if that coil is any good too. So let's go clean that surface right there and prop it open. You probably put a meter on it too. Now that I snapped it a couple of times, it may have already corrected itself. Let's go put it on ohms and we should get it zeroed out going across it. Yeah. And you open it. <laughs> you open it, it should go away. <laughs> Might be back feeding through the coil a little bit. That also could be a problem too. Hmm. Well, let's go hit it with a points file. And then we'll throw that, that, let's just break clean. One thing points do not like is oil. Definitely looks like a, those points will last you forever. Look how much of a, a tip is on there. All right, let's go throw the flywheel back on it real quick. We'll check the gap. Do we have a, make sure there's a key in it. We had nothing to turn it with on the other side. Yeah, let's go pop that on. Yeah, I think the magnets get me. Let go. One strong magnet. I gotta turn it where the magnets aren't there. Uh, you didn't see anything. I don't hear it. Oh, turn. Oh, I can turn the body in the back. Okay. Magnet is still in the wrong spot. Let's go with, we want it right about, right about there. And throw the nut back on it. And we should be able to spin it with the drill. And we probably just bypass the plug. We'll put the wire right on it. Let me go get set up with something that's not an impact. Actually, we've got to spin it and make sure those points are opening. Much of a gap. I think there's a gap there. Yeah, I can kind of see through it. All right, so we'll put the drill on it. See what we get. Let's give it a shot. Got to tighten that nut up a little. Wrong socket. There we go. <laughs> That's a very, very tiny. There was like one little tiny, tiny spark.
bet you that's why somebody put that spark plug really tight because the spark is very weak. I don't know if you guys can see, even see it. More I spin it up, it's, it's getting something, but you're not gonna be able to. Well, actually, maybe on a bicycle, right? If you're on a bike, you're gonna get it going fairly good and you, you pump pumping gear. I'm thinking like when you're trying to like wrap a rope around it and pull it, you wouldn't have that much. Uh, I gotta go get the clutch on the drill so it doesn't back the nut off. This is just a, uh, I think they go on a breaker bar. It's just a ratcheting socket. You, you have the capacity of flipping over, you know, forward and reverse, which way it goes. So that's just put together with a bunch of different sockets. So what, when you spin the engine, it cranks one way, but if the engine, like, this thing you let off, the drill's got kind of a break on it. It stops really quick. So this is still moving with momentum, so it always spins the nut off. Or if the engine starts up, so now it's got the capacity to ratchet forward. See what I mean? So I won't do anything. Let's go, uh, let that spin for a little bit, and then we'll put the plug on, make sure we got something, maybe jumping across this plug. <laughs> you know, probably wouldn't hurt too. Let's go open those points up a little bit. That didn't look like much of a window. I'm gonna set them up, I don't know, about 16th hour or so. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, my guess is we crack that screw loose right there. And you probably can tweak the whole plate. And I'm gonna be able to do this one handed. Hopefully you don't have to move that post in and out, you know? I think I'm going to have to put you down and you're going to have to take my word for it. Yeah, I think if anything, it's too far the other way now. I'm probably at like 30 thou. It's about the same. Go pop that plug in there. See if that helps us. See if we get anything across the plug, you know? Now you guys probably aren't seeing anything for light. If this works, I'll smell light off. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah, we've got something. We'll pop the lights off real quick. I'll show you. We'll leave it at that. If you have issues with it running later, well, I'll close those points up a little bit. They seemed a little too tight, though. Especially for old stuff. Yeah, see if that's a little better. Kind of, kind of intermittent though. It's not like it's a, it's a constant, but who knows? Let's condensers have a uh, a tendency, you know, they they fail over age just to the way that they're made. They're kind of rolled up between like paper and a foil, and over time that that fails. So the capacitor, condenser, capacitor, maybe shot. Let's go dribble a little bit of fuel in it. See what we get. I think we're gonna switch this over to the workbench and we'll clamp it down a little bit better. It's really kind of flopping around. Maybe I can grab this in the vise or something to hold it. You know, they've got the crap out of the way. Now we can see what it's doing. So this would have rubbed against the tire, my guess. Because that's tied right to the flywheel. And it probably, the engine just maybe rocked onto a tire, my guess. Or it had a belt, like a leather belt, that drove it. And you can see the concaveness to it. Got a bit of a, one of those. What's that? Why would that, would that have been to there? It doesn't make any sense because you wouldn't have any spark. Let's, well, we'll see. Maybe that just ripped out of there. It doesn't make any sense though. Maybe that was the other end of like a wire. So you had two wires coming off it and, and up to a kill switch. All right, see so we get a little premix, a little too much premix. <laughs> I believe the throttle's wide open and the choke is wide open. that to not break the end of the spark plug off. Damn it. 
There we go. Think it'll go? The sparks got me a little. <laughs> and there goes my drill. Hold on. Call that a teaser. I see nothing. In case it's arcing out. Try grounding in that wire, see if it does anything. I wouldn't think so, because why would you have it external though, you know? Unless you open it to shut it off. I'd never seen that before. Let's go give her a shot down the throat. Try grounding it one more time. I mean, it's puffing smoke, but... <laughs> Nothing. I think we found out why it might have been put away. It'll give her a little while it's going. <laughs> Hold on. Sign of life. Come on, give me another one. Yeah, I think we just have too weak a spark for it to do what it needs to do. It's kind of like a hit and miss engine, isn't it? Yeah, let's go play with it just a little more. See the smoke that it puffs out. That's for sure. Yeah, that spark is just too intermittent. Uh, I'm gonna go try finding and see if I have another fat plug for it. One that's got an end on it, we could actually thread to. And then we'll, maybe we'll try it one more time. And then uh, I think we have to go, maybe we'll chase a condenser. Went shopping. 
That's what it's supposed to look like. Had a little threaded top on it. Let's go throw that on there real quick. And give her a spin and see if we get any kind of improvement. You're waiting for me to zap myself, aren't you? Mm. Yeah. That one sparks all the time. Even at slow speed, I'm not sure it's showing up. All right. Let's go back you up a hair. Don't want you to get hurt. Think it'll do it? I still think it needs a condenser, but let's see. Let's go clamp that down. Get a better bite on it. Nice. Let's see if we can bottle feed it. Keep it going. something that was more than enough gas it should have went what if it's uh zapping out hold on yeah. we could have uh no crank seals too would be the other thing on the bottom end let's give her a, another one of them see if it repeats Try to zero in on its issues, you know? Oh, maybe. We lost it. Let's see if Spark went away on us. See, it's arcing, but it's not arcing to the electrode. Maybe like it's just fouled. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, it's good again now. Spark is really decent now. I may have just flooded it. If it goes this time, we'll dig into that carb. If not, we'll throw a condenser in it. Let's open a full throttle, get some air in it.
I think it might have a crank seal problem. The reason why I say that is it's getting wet. I'm seeing fuel right down inside here. So on a two stroke, it uses the bottom half of the engine for the charge. Uh, pretty sure that this, even this old one will still be the same way. It kind of comes in under the piston. Piston goes down. The crankcase has uh, fuel, oil mix, and then that, when the piston goes down, the charge goes around to the top and it goes back up and it squeezes it. As it's going back up, it's drawing fuel back into the bottom for the next charge to come around. So uh, if you get a crankcase leak, if you get a, a leak anywhere from this side or that side of the crank, the it, it's not doing the pump from top to bottom like it should. There's a joke there. <laughs> I'm sure that wire's not helping us neither. Yeah, we should probably throw something on that. Anyway, let's keep moving forward. Let's see what we get. Let's go see what's in that float ball what condition it was in. It's been at least 45 years. I would think that the fuel that was in there was not like modern fuel damage that it does. But you never know. Am I going to be able to get that last one? Yeah, that's in a way. Not, now it's not. <laughs> I would think it probably has a cork float. Being from the 30s. Let's not lose any of them. Huh? Love tap. Dust came out. Was that a bad sign? <laughs> That's a brass float. Looks kind of dented up though, like somebody's been. Feels tad heavy too. Clean. It's clean inside. That's not bad at all. You're just a piece of crap, you know? <laughs> uh, let's. Go pop that float off and we'll soak it in something. Make sure that is not a sinker. And then we'll see if that and you don't see. Seems like it's moving okay. Yeah, go pop that out, make sure that that floats. I'm just kind of questioning the the dentiness that's in the top of it. Let's see what we get. Sinks right to the bottom. I can let that sit in there for a minute. Check it, because it should float for being empty for that long, but if it's gonna take on any fluid, it'll do it in a minute. So let that uh, stay in your memory is where it was sticking. We'll come back and check it. Sometimes you could uh, pressure test the bottom of it. I don't see if really having any access into that. It also feels like it's a, a little more bindy again than it was before. Oh, the plug's still on it. I would do it. Even with that though, it still kind of feels like it's a little more. Eh. I'll let it be. I was thinking about putting some more oil down inside it. Problem with that is you also kind of foul the plug out when you do it. I shot some oil down in here because you got the engine, then you got the spacer, and then there's gotta be a, a bearing or a bushing supporting this side of it. So I threw a little bit of oil down in there. I wonder if it's got like a little oil port or something that you... Something has to be able to lubricate that. Did they not care? <laughs> yeah, I definitely think this is what drove the tire right in the middle. And it's got a pivot point right here. And it probably had a lever or something. Maybe it went down the front wheel. I, I would guess it would be on the front wheel. And there's a there's a, a single spot underneath and it's probably just all oh, that's missing because you know it was made up on this piece of wood right here and this is none of this looks like what would have came with it you know they just kind of set it up maybe it was running something else they ran a washing machine or something back then it was real common you had on your porch or you, you would have a, a gas powered motor that would run a washing machine they're very small they were like half a horsepower if that and my my guess is this is the same thing. And maybe possibly that's what they used it for instead of uh, 
on a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah, the hunk of wood looks like it's from uh, <laughs> that era. Check out that needle real quick. I'm gonna blow in through here and then kind of put my finger over and see if it's a, a, a working valve. Take it right out of there. Seems pretty good. Gasket looks okay. Let's see what we got for adjustments on it. It looks like just this one, which is going to be a, a pinch point. It's going to be a needle that shuts off a port. So it'll probably be a jet of some sort in the bowl going this way. And then this needle pinches it off. This is a vacuum. Uh, as uh, air gets sucked through here, it's a like an hourglass look to it. And right after the hourglass, right after it makes the bend and starts getting larger again, there'll be a little hole and there's, there's vacuum created there. And that's what draws the fuel in. Well, where the fuel gets drawn in, you can adjust the mix by uh, pinching off how much goes through there. And then when it's cold, you just close the choke, chokes spring, spring, spring loaded to the throttle. I guess, I guess if it was on the front handlebars. You would just work, reach over and give her and not give her. <laughs> Essentially, you probably just run full throttle. Maybe when you, you bumped it off the wheel, you would just go the other way and go to an idle. And you would lift you would lift it up off the tire. Go check on our float. Looks about the same, right? Yeah, let's go put all that back together. And uh, put some fuel in the float ball. Give her a spin, see if it'll take off. Yeah, we got it open, might as well just fill her up some. I would say that's more than enough, huh? As long as it's above that port right there, that's where it's going to draw in. Yeah. Let's screw that back down. So other than putting fuel in, that's really all we did. I haven't put that jet, done anything with that mixture. I'm not gonna give you, I'm not gonna give you any choke. Let's just see what we get. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna give it some choke. Now you gotta hold it. <laughs> right, I lost my drill. That's a good sign. Let's give us which way is throttle. I think that was full throttle, right? choke to try to maintain. Probably gonna run out of gas in a second too. Just about out of gas. <laughs> I think we're getting close. Let's go hook up a fuel supply that we can hang so that the carb stays full and we'll try it again. I think I'm afraid that that wire is going to break the rest of the way right there. So I got a piece of shrink tube. Let's go throw that over there and uh, see if we can melt that down. 
give it a little moral support. Also keep it, if, it, if it's gonna arc across there, that'll help stop that too. I tried this thing both ways. And no matter what, it seems like it wants to leak right around there. I had that in it on there, did the same thing, so it must be up in this fitting. I don't know if there's a crack in it or what. And let's go check the stash. For something that mimics those threads. I don't, know if we, I don't know if we need an elbow. Is that the same as... That's the next one up, isn't it? Yeah. What's that? Doesn't look like the right thread, does it? Yeah, I'll keep hunting. See anything? That looks like it's all copper, so that's... Yeah, that's not gonna do us. I have to be on this floor. That might be it. Yeah, we got a fuel supply going to it. I got it like 24 to one mix. I would figure this old stuff is probably fairly on the rich side. Uh, that's full throttle, it's off. Let's go a little bit of throttle. You know what we should do? It had that little plate on it. That thing on the carb. Let's go throw that on the face of the carb real quick. And uh, it'll, Kind of give it a little bit of a baffle. Yep. Let's go take care of that. That'll actually kind of change the mix a little bit too. A little bit of drag on the air cleaner. Kill wires out of the way. Let's see what we get. Here's the choke. choke to stay running. Let me go over a little bit more throttle and uh, we may open up the air fuel mix. Kind of want to leave it where it was just in case that's probably where it was running normal. sure why. 
have lost something. Let's see if it's flooded. It's bone dry. I bet you the carb is out of gas. I bet you nothing went down into the carb. I don't know if it's got a little... It doesn't have a little drain on it. I want to see if it had a drain to go see if we had any fuel going in it. I am going to go pinch off the fuel supply and unscrew the top of the carb. We'll open it up and we'll see if there's anything in it. One screw left. My guess is it's empty, but we'll see. No. No. Should have rain on that. Hmm. I wonder if we kicked up a bunch of... Well, it's not dirt on the bottom. Let's go pull that main jet out of it. We'll make sure that passage is clear. Just seems like it ran out of fuel. Yeah, you know, spark could have died on us too. I don't know, but uh, let's go take the needle out. I would think as soon as we take it out, it would piss fuel out of it, but we'll see. that much gas in there. I'm gonna go take an air gun and blow that passage through, wipe up this gas I just spilled. So we don't make a little poof. I blew air through it, but it didn't, and I, you know, I put my finger over where it goes into the bowl. I didn't feel like I could blow all that air through, down through the, up through, down through. So there's a mean jet in there, you can see it. Let's see if we can get that out of there. That might be clogged. Not tight, I can tell you that. Let's see what that looks like. That's supposed to be down further or no? Like that? Yeah. I'm gonna go take a second, make sure that all that is clear. And uh, put it back together, try it again. So, for those who don't know, just so it may make a little bit more sense while the parts are out. So this needle will choke off that port right there. The more you run it in, the more you choke off how much fuel could get drawn up through this jet. And then this enters that, that hourglass I was talking about. And at the tip of this, there's vacuum. So it's trying to suck fuel up through here. And we are restricting the fuel through there. And between here and here, is where the float ball dumps the gas in to this area right here. So that's the whole setup, just so it possibly makes a little bit more sense to you. And that would be nothing. It's all totally closed off. And usually, you know, most stuff is about two turns out. All back together, let's do a quick spark check. Make sure that's still doing what it should be doing. It's okay, it's not great. Still kind of suspect on that too. Um, two turns out on the air fuel mix. Let's go see how that wants to work for us. Try it again. And I think if we don't get anything now, I may try to go in with a uh, condenser. And if that doesn't work, I think probably we're gonna deal with crank seals on the bottom end. It's back, yep. Drink! My little friend. Okay, throttle, we'll leave it in the middle somewhere. No, no choke. That plug was dry too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You see? I think that float might be overflowing though. It's now getting wet on top. Here's the runner. 
you know, all this started getting wet. Maybe that's loose. Let's go set up again. Iron hole. up a little bit. I'll try adjusting that air fuel mix. Close. I think the throttle really doesn't have much response. died without me doing anything though. Oh. <laughs> well there's a problem. <laughs> I don't know if it was a great idea to put this up on the bench. Shaking everything off of it. idle speed to get to run a little slower again if it probably went on a bike you really don't even care it's definitely pushing some uh, fuel out around that float bowl though to try snugging them up a little more the top of that top of that might be warped it's just not sealing and then when it shakes Yeah, they're all tight, so let's um <laughs> you know give me a minute, I gotta clean some crap off the bench and we'll we'll fire it up again. I even put that little muffler piece on too, maybe it'll help it. At least sound a little better. See if we get any kind of difference in the sound. <laughs> give her some throttle. Give me some more fuel. I want to take any throttle. common problem up here. Let's go see if we can get a, a bit of a get in there. We can see if we can dial it in. You know, it's probably set to run at one speed. I wonder if you were actually when you ride the bike too, you're just kind of reaching underneath there and, and tweaking that air fuel mix. I wouldn't think so, but you never know.
I think it's dumping so much fuel out, it's kind of uh, messing it up a little bit. Shut the gas off altogether. Yeah, it's pretty hot. The other part too is you'd be moving, you know? It had some airflow going across it. It doesn't have that right now. Just blow a fan or something on it. And let her cool down a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, it keeps, I'm not sure where the gas is coming from. It looks like, you know, maybe right at that, that split of the carb right there. And the gasket's just not sealing it enough. Maybe that, it kind of, has a square port to it and then on the top it has like a loop where it goes around where there's no screw or nothing right in this area to hold that part of the bowl down right there i think that's where it's leaking go ahead, cool down a little bit maybe we'll uh, try her one more time let's go see how she feels definitely a lot freer than it was it might be a little rich on the oil too but I'd rather that than the other way. And the other part too is we could also have issues with seals on the bottom of the crank that are just kind of making it play well. I tried revving it up and like it would be okay. It would be okay like towards the idle area. I tweak in the air fuel mix where I kind of heard it sound the best and as soon as I would rev, try to rev the gas up it would just break up and I try adjusting it again and then I lose it. So not quite sure what's happening. All right, one last Yahoo. Let's see what we get. It's coming right out of the center of a breather in the middle, right there. It's probably some kind of breather hole or cup or something. Not quite sure what that would be. But I think we should let it be, because here's the problem. It, it's it's going to overheat. It's, again, it's sitting still. It seems like it's decent. Uh, possibly the crank seals are off a little bit too, is, is my next guess. I do think we're leaking right there, judging by the, the, the moisture that's right there. That would be the again the the gas and oil from the crankcase coming out from the side of it and leaking and kind of indication of a seal. So it'll be real hard to kind of dial in like that. I don't know, guys. I had some fun with it playing around for something that's what is it seventy probably seventy five years old, something like that. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Maybe older than that. I gotta do my math. Thirties, so that's 70, 80, 90 years old. Yeah. Around 90 years old, 70. If it's a, say, call it 1930. 
So 30 to 2,070 years and uh, another 22 on top of that. So, yeah. That would be, if it was a 32, it would be 90 years old. The technology of 90 years ago. Still firing up and, and coming back to life. I don't know how smooth it was ever ran to begin with. I'm sure some of you guys are probably be more knowledgeable about these than I am, but <laughs> that's what I got. I don't know how would it, you know, the idea was, I, I still think this is what drove the tire. I don't know what that, where's that other crap that was there? All this stuff that we took off. My guess, like, why would you have a pulley like that? That's, no, somebody added that on. That's a later style, I think. So I'll, that's probably what it was. They probably set it up to run like a washing machine or something. Or some kind of external, like, water pump or, you know. Yeah, especially with the, the two of them. Yeah. That's not normal, right? A little chattering that's going on there. That looks homemade. Yeah, maybe that was like a leather belt. Or just a spacer. Maybe they just used it as a spacer. Hard to say. Plus it was with that other engine that has kind of that same setup on it for a pulley. So maybe it was used for the same setup. Again, a wash machine or whatever it would have been used for. A little sawmill. Nah, that wouldn't be enough power for a sawmill. Maybe we'll have some fun with this one. Let me know if you want to see this one fire up. This looks more familiar. I think we screwed around with one of these once before. Or one that's close to it as far as style. I just seem to remember this cone on the uh, end of the, the motor. But for this one, guys, I gotta go clean up. I got some errands to run. I think this was, this was just kind of uh, off the cuff. I was over visiting a friend's house. I wanna thank Sammy for uh, mentioning what he had upstairs and letting us kind of go and have a little bit of fun with him. And uh, maybe we'll go screw with the other one pretty soon. But for this one, I think we're done. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for hanging out. And uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. Till then, later. All right, one more time. That's where I like it. Yeah, just had to go make it a little bit leaner and she took right off. And she's cooking. See ya. Hey, case anybody wants an update on the mini truck, it's doing great. Uh, smokes really pretty good when it's cold. Once it warms up, it goes away. A little bit between when you shift gears, you see a puff come out of it. This is the one that had the blown head gasket, the cooling system, the oil system was full of coolant. And I didn't, we didn't give it much of a, a hope of running at all. But it's actually doing pretty good. Put seats in it permanently. Made some platforms for them. There's a clip in the front. You just clip that and it's locked into tongs in the back. The whole seat will come out on both of them so you can have access to the engine. And it's much quieter when you're riding it around well, other than the blown, the blown muffler. But the fact that it's not open to the engine compartment anymore has made it much better to uh, tool around. We'll see how it holds up. If it blows up, it blows up. If it doesn't, then. Uh, I'll keep tooling around with it. And if it does blow up, we'll find some other motor to put in it.